My name is David Tyree from the New York Football Giants, Super Bowl 42 champion. Goes up for it like a basketball player. Harrison trying to knock it down. When I was a when I was a kid, I never knew my mom and dad together, but I knew, you know, having a sense that my dad was always some, you know, he was kind of like a hero, hero figure. Like, uh, you know, he would come come by, bring popsicles, bring, you know, take us out for ice cream, do all kind of fun. But uh, you know, but it always hurt when when he had to go. My house was really like a you know, a safe haven for darkness. My, my mom kind of had a worldly wisdom that said, I'd rather have, you know, my kids acting crazy in my own home versus them be out, being out on the street. They're probably gonna do it anyway. Being exposed to, you know, to a liberal, you know, I guess you said a very liberal uh, household really, you know, created the avenues for me to make a ton of bad choices as a young kid. First time I experimented with alcohol was, uh, you know, towards the end of my eighth grade year. Um, just kind of got together with a friend. And uh, you know he, he basically came by with some 40s and <laughs> some Mad Dog and, and uh, you know just some good old cheap booze. By the time I was in eighth grade, I was on probation. That urge and that crave, um, you know, creeps up on you. And the next time, instead of three months later, it becomes one month later. Instead of one month later, it becomes every weekend. And so that was kind of like my progression from the eighth eighth grade, you know, very much up to my you know freshman and sophomore year. Freshman and sophomore years when marijuana came into the picture. The destructive pattern of it, you know, it, it was really foolish at that point, but I would say, um, you know, by the time I got to college was when it kind of got scary, you know. Syracuse University was one of the first schools to present me a full athletic scholarship. I believe it was the first school. And, uh, you know, so the proximity, the tradition, all that stuff held its lore, and I chose Syracuse University to, to go to college. Um, but when I got to college is when blackouts, you know, started to become, uh, you know, come be a part of my experience in, you know, dealing with especially alcohol. I kind of dismissed marijuana when I got to Syracuse because of the fear of drug testing. It's a really scary feeling when you, all of a sudden, you wake up and, you know, the next morning and you don't know exactly what happened. You don't know how you got home. I've had experiences where I've woken up naked, don't know who I lay with. Woken up in someone else's house, don't know whose house I'm in. Woken up, you know, dirty. My, my biggest challenges was, um, you know, just the root of it was selfishness. It wasn't faithful from day one. I had my son, my first son, Tayon, uh, going into my senior year in college and it was nothing I was ready for or you know at that point nothing I really desired it was really all about me I had the pain of going you know of having abortion as a you know freshman in high school and having those regrets and still you know every now and then thinking how old that child could have been if we had chosen to give him life so that's really uh, the birth of Tayon really uh, you know for the first time got me thinking about you know the NFL you know so my attitude really became you know all I want is an opportunity. And, uh, you know, it was ended up being drafted in the sixth round by the New York Giants, coming right back home. And uh, I guess you could say with the primary emphasis of being a special teams player. Uh, my, my transition uh, on the field was pretty smooth, but off the field, you know, keeping in mind that I was coming home back to all, all the same friends I grew up with, um, you know, still love them to this day, but, you know, nothing we were doing was positive at that point in life. Throughout my rookie year, my challenges, you know, with the, with the drugs and, the, you know, with the, with the marijuana and alcohol really led to my character being exposed. I'd actually made a real shallow commitment to Christ in the chapel early in the preseason. Many people have been in church and they, you know, they come out of church and they say, man, it felt like it was talking just to me. Yeah, God is always talking just to us. And it's kind of one of those moments. So I made a confession but I really left my heart, you know, out of that confession. The Bible says if you believe with your, you know, if you confess with your mouth and you believe your heart, you shall be saved. I was a powerless, you know, uh, you know, powerless Christian. I think I accrued about $10,000 worth of fines. It probably should have been more. My mentality at that point was, well, you know, I'm smoking the best bud. I might as well start selling it. And so that's what I did. You know, I got, you know, a few of the homies from, from around the way. You know, I supplied the bud. You know, they, they distributed, not even realizing the, you know, what I had at my disposal, you know, as an NFL athlete, I was willing to risk it all and ruin it all. I went up to New York to, you know, to re-up, and coming back, I got busted with a half a pound of marijuana. And that's when, uh, that's when things began to change. At that point in that jail cell was the first time out of the sincerity of my heart that I really cried out to God. And I just had a very simple prayer. I said, God, all I know is I need you. Just looked up to that ceiling. Just all I know is I need you. 
And if you could allow me to keep my job, I'd appreciate that too. So, that, you know, that was just my real authentic prayer, um, you know, in that jail cell all by myself. My spiritual mom, we prayed the night before the Super Bowl, and she spoke via the Lord and said, uh, God is going to quicken your feet. Tell me four things that God's going to quicken your feet. God is going to give you the feet of hind, uh, going to give you hind's feet, like the feet of a deer to jump high. And she said, God is putting spiritual glue on your hands. And then she said, God is going to give you the big play. Third down and five. The play was um, 62 Union Y sale. I was in option, not the greatest option, I, I guess you could say. The truth was, I actually was a you know a pretty primary target um, based on the coverage we got, which is uh, you know 42 coverage, which is cover four to one side and cover two to the other. And basically, uh, you know that all that all went to nothing because uh, you know New England came with the heat. Pressure from Thomas off the edge. Eli Manning stays on his feet. For a guy who can barely jump rope to get you know to get, <laughs> to get out the grasp of three Patriot defenders. And for myself, a guy who probably has the worst vertical jump on the team, um, to go, you know, to go up with a guy on his hip. Airs it out down the field. It is caught by Tyree inside the 25 and a timeout taken. We usually take somebody 80 catches in a season. God did for me with one. It has given me a tremendous platform for Christ, you know, when, uh, you know, they might not know David Tyree, but everybody knows the guy who made the catch on his head. That far from defines me. My passion is to, you know, to make an impact and, uh, you know, for, for the kingdom of God. My closest friend is uh, Rich Mahler. He's been my financial advisor for years now. And uh, more importantly, he's a man who loves God, honors God. And uh, now God has really called me to labor with him. And so primarily um, my role there has been to really put the spiritual backbone uh, be, you know, behind ICF and some of the vision that's going, going on there, namely um, the experience outreach, with, you know, which excites me. The experience is a, you know, is a tremendous outreach opportunity that goes to the world's largest sporting events. I would say the mission of the experience is to, uh, to bring, you know, to, to truly bring an alternative experience and the way I like to you know, sum up what is the experience. The experience is the, the light of Christ. As great as the Super Bowl was, as great as being a Super Bowl champion was, um, it pales in comparison to, to the encounter that I've had with Christ. That's who I am.